Hi, we're the Mind Body Couple. I'm Tanner Murtaugh. And I'm Anne Hampson. And this podcast is dedicated to helping you unlearn neuroplastic pain and mind body concerns. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're doing this episode with our daughter playing in her room right now. <laughs> not that we've abandoned her up there, Tanner. Well, we have not. Bad the way you we, got, that. we got the monitor. <laughs> We're watching her. We've placed her up there briefly so we can yeah. record this, mainly because we want our relaxing time later um, of watching TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kids go to bed. <laughs> but she's happy. We can see her. She's lining up her peppas. She she loves the show Peppa Pig. I feel like no one really is going to know. There might about. be a parent out there who's binge watched Peppa Pig like we have. Maybe that knows like every episode and story. Totally. Yeah, I feel for you if yeah. if that's you. <laughs> she uh, she's got like I don't know thirty. Yes, Peppa and Pig. probably more coming. Yeah, so many Peppa Pig figurines. Mm-hmm. The life of. Small children. <laughs> yeah, and if she loses one? Oh, yeah, she knows. Actually, right before we started the podcast, she, I, like, went, took her to her room. I helped her find her Peppas. And then she was like, where's the birthday Peppa? And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, I, I don't know. But I didn't have time to find birthday Peppa. But So luckily, I smoothed it over. But that's right. She knows all yeah. of the different figurines. So if you're wondering what we're going to be doing after this podcast episode... <laughs> Looking for birthday Peppa. Birthday Peppa. Yeah. The hunt is on. <laughs> yes. Hopefully, though, we'll have, like, you know, toned our vagus nerve, and we'll go in there calm, ready, and relaxed. Yeah. That's your hope. You're ready. <laughs> I've looked for that birthday Peppa. I've spent hours looking. Birthday Peppa goes missing a lot. Is it because you don't like birthday Peppa? I I don't particularly not like birthday Peppa. I feel like... <sighs> <laughs> pretty pretty indifferent to birthday Peppa. <laughs> this is the weirdest intro we should Yeah, this off. is weird. We should yeah. get to the topic. We're if, sorry. If you're We're still sorry. listening. <laughs> oh, birthday Peppa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The topic for today, cognitive messages of safety. I realize that ramble has nothing to do with our topic. We could probably tie it in. We'll I'm, try. Okay, I'm the we'll, expert it is our of plan. tying in. Our kids and our pets Random. <laughs> into the topic. Okay. We'll be watching for it, Tanner. Well, the, th- the thing is, is that, you know, birthday Peppa. Oh, you're doing it right now. I thought we were doing that. I and thought you are going to, like, surprise us halfway through. Oh, no, I just figured I'd dive in. Oh, like, okay. I think yeah. birthday Peppa is a message of safety to our daughter. How? It's always lost. I know, but when, when birthday Peppa is found, it's like she experiences this burst of safety inside. I guess so. Yes. <laughs> You're <laughs> not the, sold. It's not the greatest tie-in, but all right. Well, here we are. <laughs> One thing I want to say about this topic, though. So the topic, let's get to that. Mm-hmm. Cognitive messages of safety. Um, I think is actually a great one because I think there's so much that can be said about messages of safety and how vital it is to be utilizing this to regulate the nervous system, to change our relationship with our pain, so many, so many things. Yeah. And so what I typically ask people when I'm working with them are, because this is important, I want to emphasize this, sometimes when we've had chronic pain and symptoms for so long, it's unconscious. Mm -hmm. Like our thoughts and our beliefs about our pain and symptoms are just at such an unconscious level because we're just constantly thinking about them in this negative way. And so it's really important to understand like what actually are the thoughts and beliefs about your pain or symptoms. For you, Tanner, did you actually have to spend some time like really asking yourself that question and thinking about it because it was so unconscious for you. Yeah, and you know, I had enough of awareness that I knew there was this dysregulated response of either like terror or despair, mm-hmm. so sympathetic or dorsal. But right. but the actual thoughts, some of them, it had been so many years that some of the behaviors I was engaging in they linked back to a certain belief I had. But it was so second nature 
at that point for me to live in my life a certain way that I didn't even notice them. And so for myself, you know, and for everyone listening out there, things that are important to consider when we're talking about thoughts and beliefs about your pain or symptoms. First off, do you think they're permanent? Mm. That's important because a lot of people, once they get far enough into this journey and they've tried all the medical treatments and nothing's yeah. working, there becomes this belief, this thought pattern of this is permanent. And there's almost like this half attempt at treatments. And I remember that. Like, I would, like I would go to the next physio and like I really didn't have much hope left. Right. It's like I'm just going to do it because I'm covering all the bases. Yeah. Like I don't know what else to do. Mm. And I guess it's better than doing nothing. But I really had this belief of like this is permanence. Now the second pattern that I see is that there's major damage that is causing the pain or symptoms. This belief that there is. Mm-hmm. Like there's these thoughts and beliefs patterns. For example, something that I didn't notice when I was first healing and I became really aware of mm. is every time I walked, I'd have this like image and this thought that my spine was worsening with every step. Right. That's a really scary belief. Yeah, totally. To be feeding yourself. And every time I walked, this is what I was feeding my brain. How did you, do you remember, Tanner, how you felt like in those moments emotionally kind of? Yeah, because there was such a level of avoidance Mm -hmm. when it came to walking for me. There was, there was definitely great terror that I needed to lower the amount I was walking as much as humanly possible. But by the end of my journey, I knew I was avoiding walking, but I wasn't really aware of like these thoughts that were peppering me every time I was doing that. Mm -hmm. They just become unnoticeable because it was just the way I functioned. Mm -hmm. The next one is, you know, will you be able to heal using a mind-body approach? Right. And that can, if... I imagine that can be hard to really believe or buy into that if there's such fear that there's something wrong with the body and it's never going to get better. Yes. And people don't have to fully believe it at first. Mm -hmm. I want to be clear if you're listening and maybe you're new to this podcast Mm -hmm. and you're still with us after we talked about birthday Peppa for (laughs) probably four minutes. (laughs) Thank you. We need to get that out sometimes. Yeah, the birthday Peppa. (sighs) Oh, man, I'm sorry I brought it back in. But, you know, will a mind-body approach work? Mm -hmm. Because for a lot of people, they're not even really open. It's just another base that they're covering. And I get why we get there. Yeah. But part of this healing is starting to buy in, is starting to have hope. And I think that that can be really scary. And I empathize with people because... I probably mauled over this mind-body approach for a couple of months before I started to dip my toes in. Why did you spend that time mulling it over, Tanner? Like, why didn't you dip in right away? It was, you know, I didn't fully believe it. Okay. I I did have these unconscious beliefs that it was permanent, that there was something really wrong with the body. Right. Um, And it, it was just... It was too much of a 180 for me to make right away. Okay. So when I first, like, heard about Sarno, read his book, um, I always tell people I remember (laughs) hucking it across the room, ranting to you, Mm -hmm. being kind of upset of how offensive it was. Um, Why were you offended? And I know we've talked about this on other podcasts, but I think that is something that people might relate to when they're first kind of discovering this. Yeah, and I'm sure many people have started listening to our podcast and— got the wrong message Mm -hmm. because what I was offended about was I thought that my pain was not being called real. Yeah. And as Dr. Schubiner always says, you know, all pain is real. All physical symptoms are real. Yeah. Whether there is something in the body that's triggering those symptoms in the Mm -hmm. brain or whether your brain and nervous system stuck in survival mode, you know, fMRI studies like brain scan studies, they don't, they can't tell the difference. Yeah. They're they're equally as felt. They're equally as experienced. Mm-hmm. And I think as I started to get more of that messaging, I was able to open myself up. Yes. But when we come to our thoughts and beliefs, 
it's important to ask yourself, what are my thoughts and beliefs about this mind-body healing? Mm -hmm. And I think there's a huge learning component to this all the way through, but often at the beginning, in terms of that buy-in, um, understanding, learning about this mind-body connection, um, asking about the beliefs, all that piece is, is a huge is needed yeah. in the beginning to kind of get that buy-in to yeah. start becoming open. Um, you mentioned Sarno and Schubiner, and yeah. um, and that's kind of a part of the journey and learning process as well. Mm -hmm. And if you've listened to much of this podcast or any of our content, we do have a very somatic lens. Mm -hmm. But if the thoughts and beliefs about the pain or symptoms don't change, all that somatic stuff won't make a dent. Yeah, and I think that's very key, but sometimes hard to grapple with too. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think people can do all of these things like you're saying, but still just be stuck in this debate about it all. Yeah. And I always tell people when the brain expects pain mm -hmm. and symptoms, the brain produces pain and symptoms. Yeah. That's how it's designed. That's how it works. It's a bit of a flaw in <laughs> in our design, <laughs> yeah. I think, to say say the least. But the last thought and belief pattern that I really want people to question, that I see get people caught, get people stuck in their healing, mm -hmm. is that this movement, this position, this condition is triggering my pain or symptom. Because I had that with walking, as we right. talked about, like I really yeah. bought in at an unconscious level. Walking is equaling my pain. Because these condition responses, they keep us believing, okay, there's something really wrong with my body. I was just thinking, like, it makes sense that your mind went there. It makes, yeah. it makes sense that everyone's mind would go there in terms of, like, okay, when I walk, I get pain. It must be connected. Yeah. And it's the fact that our brain just makes associations. Mm -hmm. It's great at it. We have a whole episode on condition responses people can check out. Uh, if you're struggling with this, but your brain is an, an association-making machine. How did you then, Tanner, start to kind of shift that belief in terms of, okay, this is an association? Well, I learned about condition responses okay. um, kind of in my own research, and I really bought in because there was inconsistency. There was this delayed onset. Like sometimes I'd go for a walk and I wouldn't feel anything, and then yeah. the next day I'd be all of a sudden in pain. That's not how structural pain functions. If you're aggravating something, you're going to feel it right in the moment. So I had some of this evidence, and we're going to get into this in a second. So remember, when the brain and nervous system expect pain and physical symptoms, they will produce it. So the first thing that I talk about before we even start giving messages of safety to our brain, to our nervous system, which we want to do consistently, the first thing we need is awareness. So what I want people to think about and what I always ask clients is what are you typically thinking about your pain or symptoms throughout the day? Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. So at different points during different activities, when you wake up in the morning, a common one for anyone with chronic pain and symptoms. I remember doing the body scan, the first yes. morning body scan. First thing I did when I opened my eyes, scan my body kind of frantically, looking for like, what's going to hurt today? What's going on today? Mm -hmm. What's the matter today? Um, but we need that awareness. We need to be aware, you know, what is taking place in our mind as we go about our day. Well, and I think it's interesting that you mentioned the body scan because that could be looked at two ways. And so you could do the body scan first thing in mm -hmm. fear, in kind of like anticipation, or you could be doing the body scan with messages of safety, lightness and ease. And so again, it's the thoughts that are going along with that. Yeah. So these messages of safety, these come from pain reprocessing therapy. Yeah. And these are cognitive messages of safety. So they're things that we're consciously seeing to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about at the end of the podcast how you can go about using these. But the first thing is just being aware of where your thoughts and beliefs are at throughout yes. the day. But here are some kind of common 
messages of safety that I used when I uh, was going through my own pain journey. And to be clear with these tenors, because we've just been talking about beliefs and not fully buying in, did you start using these even if you weren't 100% bought in, but you're kind of working them out or oh, trying yeah. them on? Yeah, I was. I didn't fully believe them. And I'm stating some here that worked for me over time. Yeah. They may not work for you. And so we, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say then we want to be clear that... There needs to be awareness of the beliefs that we have, maybe an openness, just trying to kind of shift them and then working this approach a little bit with messages of safety. Yes, because cognitive messages of safety are a brain retraining exercise. Yeah. If the messages of safety were just landing for you and you're feeling bathed in calmness and <laughs> ease, your brain was already retrained and you don't need them. Mm, okay. That's the important piece there. I utilized these consistently before I started to actually buy in. But eventually, over time, I got to this very, like, calm, at ease, light place. Yeah. Which had a big part to play in my brain actually retraining out of chronic pain and symptoms. Yeah. So here are some of mine. But one thing to bear in mind is you also want to build them based off of your evidence. Mm -hmm. Our second podcast episode ever, we talk about evidence. Yeah, gathering evidence. Yeah, and the messages of safety, as you're going to see with mine, were partly built off my evidence. Mm -hmm. So they, they landed more because I had objective evidence that they made sense. Well, back to that example then of the delayed pain for you. Like, was that kind of evidence of like, okay, there's this association going exactly. on. Exactly. It's on the list here. Anne. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're diving in. Yeah. Okay. So, messages of safety that worked for me. I know my body is not damaged. This symptom is occurring due to a miscommunication between my body and my brain. I am safe. Mm -hmm. I like the science behind this one explaining there's a miscommunication going on between the body and the brain. That's what's responsible for neuroplastic pain and symptoms. Mm -hmm. My symptom reduces when I'm relaxed and increases when I'm anxious. This is evidence my symptom is neuroplastic. Yes. So it's the emotional element. This is sometimes the first evidence that people kind of notice in themselves, but we really want to amplify that if you are seeing that. I will no longer fight you symptom. Because I know you're only occurring due to my nervous system being stuck in a state of survival. Mm -hmm. This one I really like because people get in that fight yes. kind of mentality. Like fight it away, yeah. going to kind of do everything to get rid of it, yeah. that intensity. And a lot of times I'd start my day off like this, reminding myself, like, I'm not going to fight you today. I'm not going to get into this aggressive, angry mode. Yes. I don't have a pain or symptom problem. I have a nervous system dysregulation problem. And for this one, Tanner, because we talk about like wanting to get to this point where we believe our messages of safety. When did you start believing, yes, this is a nervous system regulation problem? Yeah, so this is one that I started giving to myself early on. But eventually it just clicked. Yeah. So I, I had a number of months where this was like the first thing. As soon as I thought negatively about my pain this was the first thing i remind myself like i don't have a pain problem mm -hmm. this is this is a nervous system dysregulation problem and it would almost help me direct my behavior towards that instead of focusing on the pain ah. and trying to fix it and figure it out so it was kind of that relationship shift with the pain then yeah you started to view it differently you started to think of it in this kind of other way yeah alan gordon this you know he says you, know, you don't have a pain problem you have a fear problem mm. Um, and that's, I kind of modified it, but that's where I got it from. And I like that because you are changing the relationship. Yeah. You're changing the, the cognitive understanding of what the actual underlying problem is. Well, and all of these messages of safety help shift that belief, whether that belief is already changing anyways, it keeps that belief kind of shifting. Mm -hmm. So this next one has a bit of my evidence. This was a message of safety I would give when I was dealing with condition responses mm -hmm. like walking or positions or movements mm -hmm. that my brain really had this unconscious fear of. My symptom is inconsistent 
It moves and spreads and can have a delayed onset after an activity. This tells me my body is physically safe yes. and able to do things. And you got to this one for knowing that this is kind of a component of neuroplastic pain. Yes. So that's a, you know, I'm utilizing that evidence and that's why these are very individual. Yes. Some of them might have landed for you as you were listening to them, but these can be very individual. And mm. I really encourage people to come up with a big list. Yeah. Some of them are going to be awful. That's okay. They're not <laughs> going to work. And that's all right. That's why you're coming up with a huge list, but you're coming up with that huge list to see what ones are the most believable right now. Yeah. Or what, what are the ones that don't make me fully calm, but bring a little bit of calmness. Totally. And they might shift throughout your pain journey. Like I think some of these 10 are for you. You didn't say it immediately as you learn more, as you experience more, then they resonated with you later. Exactly. Now, equally as important as our discussion on messages of safety is how do you utilize these? Yeah. Because as you know, messages of safety are part of somatic tracking. Mm -hmm. But, and the first word here is Anne's favorite word. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> you like that? I included that on the list mm -hmm. here. Consistency. Yes. Well, and okay, I'll jump in as I usually I know. do about why consistency is my favorite. <laughs> because if we want to retrain the brain, we need to be consistent. So it needs to be repetitive. It needs to be kind of um, when the pain is there, that's what we want to shift to instead of kind of fear thoughts or old beliefs. Yeah. And so it's like working that muscle. Yeah. And this is why the awareness of how many fearful, hopeless, dysregulated thoughts are you having throughout your day yeah. about your pain or symptoms because that's why we need to be consistent. Yes. So one thing I did that worked really well is every time I noticed I was having this like fearful, hopeless, helpless thought about my pain, I just give a message of safety. Mm. I wouldn't sit there and do it for half an hour, but I would just give one quickly yeah. and then move on. Well, and that's a good point. It doesn't have to be this like big, long meditation. It can if you want it to be, but it's just meant to kind of do a different response. Yeah. Now, another key element to how you want to utilize messages of safety, my favorite topic, regulation. Mm -hmm. You're not going to always be in a situation where you're going to feel regulated when you're using them. That might be why you're using them. But yeah. I found some of the, the deepest healing moments that I had was when I really did some breathing mm -hmm. or I did some type of somatic practice and I felt great regulation. And then when I said those messages of safety... I could feel, I, I know I, I couldn't actually feel it, but it felt like my brain was changing. Like okay. my brain was rewiring. There was this hopefulness. It, it sounded like like at these moments, it was an experience for you. Yeah. And so that's why I always recommend if you're struggling with this, go do 10 minutes of breathing. Mm -hmm. Go do a somatic practice off of our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Then dive into this. Yeah. Now. This is key. Use them as a way to feel safe, not to make your symptom go away. Which I think can be hard because I think all of everybody in the back of their mind wants to get rid of their symptoms. Mm -hmm. You got to think short term, long term here. In the short run, you're giving these messages of safety with hoping that on the long term, there is going to be more uh, brain retraining that takes place where totally. your symptoms reduce. Yes. But in the short run, it's just these small moments that may not seem spectacular or particularly special or you're retraining your brain. And I promise you they are special because over time, yes. the symptom can reduce using these. But focus on safety. Totally. Now, in terms of some of this, you know, one thing that I like to have people notice is become aware of somatically what occurs in your system, in your mm -hmm. nervous system, while you're giving the messages of safety. So not just your pain or symptoms, don't just focus there. But if you give some messages of safety, do you notice a shift in your body at all? Mm. I really want people to get connected with their body. You know, brain, body, nervous system, they're all very connected. And giving these messages of safety, although it's not the full solution, in my opinion, to healing from neuroplastic pain and symptoms, it can have a somatic effect. Yeah. And lastly, don't be intense while you give them. Yes, it's not like... You're okay. You're okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it might feel that way. And if you're doing it that way sometimes, all right. But we want to try to kind of have that yeah. calmness, that kind of ease to it. You want to think 
your thoughts have a tone to them. Mm. We don't think about this so much. Like words have a tone. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a tone of voice as we're talking and communicating, but you have a tone of voice as you're talking to yourself. And if it's really fast and really intense, and really pressureful, really harsh, that's not creating an environment where, where brain retraining takes place. I really like that. It's like thinking about, okay, how do I talk to myself in terms of like, how do I sound when I talk to myself? Mm-hmm. How, how am I approaching myself in terms of my thoughts? Yeah, you got to think warm, rhythmic, mm-hmm. light. I always tell people, it's an exercise I like to do with people. It's like you're walking yourself through meditation. Mm. Many people who are listening, you've listened to some meditations. They're not these intense, <laughs> harsh, you know, like there is this warm. They're not ri- like yelling at you yeah. about being safe. <laughs> There's this warm, rhythmic feel yeah. to them. And that's what you want to get into as you're giving these messages of safety. Is it okay then, Tanner, if it's a bit of like fake it till you make it kind of idea? Yeah. There is going to be a bit of fake it till you make it. Uh, you don't want them, the messages of safety being so unbelievable. Like yeah. try and pick the ones that are a little bit more believable. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, I, and Alan Gordon talks about this, I like this, where he talks about the doing happens before the feeling. Totally. Even when it, with like how you speak to yourself in tone of voice, if like you're yeah. really rageful, but you're practicing slowing down, you're practicing talking to yourself in a kinder way. Exactly. So this was our little podcast episode on mm-hmm. cognitive messages of safety. Yes. We are going to go now and look for birthday Peppa. I think so. Yeah. We had an interruption halfway through this, which you guys won't know because... Um, Our producer Alex will is be very good at slicing that out. Cut but that out. It was a bit of a panic about birthday Peppa, so uh, now we will go oh, test our daughter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the saga continues. It does continue. Please send us messages of safety. <gasps> we need that, and um, especially if we don't find it, then we do. Yeah. We really need messages of safety. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. Well, let's give that to each we'll just, other. Well, no, we, we got to give them to our daughter, too. You oh, know? right. Yes. <laughs> we'll be like, it's okay. We're going to buy you a new birthday, Peppa. Oh, that's the solution. That is, well, yeah. Let, oh. Let's be honest with ourselves here. That's the solution. Birthday Peppa is too important of a Peppa. It is. I am sorry that we tie this in again. We will <laughs> I go told many you. episodes before we talk about Peppa's ever that, again. That tie-in felt really smooth, though. It just <laughs> naturally flowed, and you felt it? Uh, I did that. Yeah, I, I presented. I brought that okay. in. Wow, okay. okay. All right. See you next time. <laughs> okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. If you want to book in a session with one of our therapists, you can go to our website at painpsychotherapy.ca. You can also follow us on Instagram at Pain Psychotherapy, where me and Anne are posting content daily and are there to respond to your comments. Also, check out our YouTube channel, which is named Tanner Murtaugh MSW RSW.